Yo, what did you guys? It is your boy, Leo Muki here, back with you with another new chapter of Gundam Build Ruby. This, and thanks a lot, guys, for the support for the first chapter. Like I said, I don't plan on, well, doing this series too often, after all. The reason being is because I might need to do a little bit of refresher on the Ruby series. And I also need to watch that of Volume 9 as well. Still haven't got to that just yet, but I'm trying my best. It's just that I haven't had much time after all. Also, some of you had that of questions thinking if this is in the same universe as that of, well, Gundam, Se Gundam Seed Soldier. And yes and no. The reason on why is yes is because it has the same... Every, all the products in basically Lore of Gundam and every other series known to man is also part of this. However, no, it's because there's, the people from that of Seed are not in this story. It wouldn't make any sense that the new Gunpla Battle Research Facility is doing with that of the, well, full co cooperation of the, Gunpla, of the Gunpla Battle Association and... The same thing with that, having that of a full-fledged team. While Sam is, well, doing all of this from the from his own pockets and trying to in, and is trying to improve Gunpla with his own from his own standpoint. However, instead of well, Sam doing it to basically interact with anything that of Gundam related, this time, instead. This is where basically people are trying to have Gundam branch out to other series besides just that of, well, Gundam itself and other mech, and other mecha series that are mostly known in that of Asian countries after all. But that's besides the point. L let's go through a little bit of recap. The first chapter we went over on the or on the beginnings of Takashi Yuki, our main protagonist of this story. As he's basically a prodigy and a lover of Gunpla throughout his entire life. However, due to him not being able to make it into the big times due to sponsors and companies not, not seeing any value in him. His parents basically disowned him, forced to, li forced to live down in a rundown one single bedroom apartment, have to work as a convenience store worker, and also somewhat of a build tutor for people overseas to other countries which made his life basically nothing but an annoyance and, a, and somewhat miserable until he meets an old high school friend who was part of his gunpla club back in the day as he offered him that of a test job for a for one of his teams that he's been that he's a part of currently oh having if they did if he did well during his test he would be able to join this official Gunpla team and by basically battling in that of other media of other worlds. One of the worlds that he chose is that of the world of Ruby. However, mid test, something goes wrong, causing quite a bit of chaos. And soon Takashi disappeared from his Gunpla pod. So with all that said, let's get into this. Shall we, guys? Chapter 2. Welcome to Remnant. How did things end up like this? Currently right now, a young girl wearing that of a black, dre of a black dress with that of red patterns, black boots, and also a red cape with that of a hood on it. As her, as her black and red hair flows, flows in the wind with... Currently, right now, she's with that of two uh, of three other ladies, as they look at least that of two years older than her. As this young and in her hands holding that of a scythe, as and not just and it's not just the four of them, as four other teens are also there as well. And right now, many of them are being surrounded by that of monsters, blackened monsters. And, one, and two of them being quite giant. One of them looking like that of a scorpion. While the other looks like that of a giant crow. I did not expect that this is how I would basically head to my dream school. 
My name is Ruby Rose. I'm a girl who dreams of becoming a huntress, a hero that protects humanity from the creatures of Grimm. These monsters right here, with, as she basically looking at the, the blackened monsters, with soon she basically swing, swinging around her scythe while then jumping around spinning, decapitating the wolf-like Grimm being the Beowulf. However, it is not just her, as then a girl with that of a white dress, with that of a side, side ponytail with white hair, and a scar going down the left side of her eye, with her baby blue eyes. She has that of a rapier, with that of a revolver cross guard, and she soon moves around in that of elegance, almost like that of a ballerina dancer, with then white snow like glyphs begin to go down were actually around her either propelling her forward sliding around it or they or either allowing her to jump higher or sending that of blast of ice or fire from it as well with then a girl wearing that of a black uniform with that of black leggings a white shirt and also that of black hair with a black bow wrapping around round her round her head as she has that of a sword but also a sheath that looks like that of a butcher's blade as she soon she switches the sword into looking like that of a pistol before then swinging around as it turns into that of of a chain sickle and last but not least that's of a well pretty curvaceous and well busty blonde as she has that of a well tan of a tan jacket under that of a yellow tank top that shows her midriff short shorts with that of with that of brown boots and also what stands out the most besides her well assets is also her long bl blonde hair with soon she basically kicking away several other beowulfs as well while punching them and then soon sending that of blast blast of punches from her sh from that of gauntlets that look like that mixture of that of shotguns actually as the others being that being that of a blonde haired boy wearing that of armor sweatshirts and having that of a sword and shield a red haired young woman with that of a pretty tall muscular this physique actually wearing that of ar wearing that of red and also bron bronze armor as she has that of a speed as that a of a red red and golden spear with that of a shield and also two others being that of a young man wearing that of a chi of a chinese shirt chinese robe shirt and has black hair with a pink streak in his hair as well with two with two pistols that look like they're actually automatic blade with blades coming from the end of of the guns and that of a red-haired girl with white, with a white white shirt and and also armor around her around her waist and on our on our arms too with that of a hammer before she switches it into that of a grenade launcher as all of them are running forward to that of ancient ruins that lead up to that of a high cliffside with then looking down it also seems like they're that it seems like there's a bottomless pit as well with as each as all of them are running away soon the giant the giant crow like grim being a nevermore soon flies down to strike to try and strike down at them with then all of them begin to scatter within soon the girl known as ruby who was narrating saying we got to take that thing down we're not going to be able to get out of here unless we do Within the blonde haired boy, known as John, couldn't help say, uh, yeah, easier said than done, Ruby. But what, but what can we do when we also have a, a Death Stalker on our tail as well? With then Sue, so, so the Scorpion Grim, known as a Death Stalker, continues to rush towards them. With, uh, with what wrong beside him being that of Bale, being that of the Beowulfs as well. Within the white, 
the white haired girl known as Weiss saying, we already have the relics. We just got to, you just got to get out of here with then yeah, the girl with the long blonde hair saying, yep, I agree with Ice Princess here, but I think it's easier said than done with two Grimms and basically a horde of, ba and a horde of, well, Beowulfs coming at us with then soon the red, the red haired girl. With that, uh, with that of the hammer named Nora, could help but speak up saying, then we'll just take them all down here and now. I mean, it can't be that hard, right? With then soon everybody looking at her before then soon another Grim rushes towards them before then being stabbed into the head by that of the girl, that of the girl with that of bl the black hair and bow with then saying, yeah, that is easier said than done. Then, without warning, the Nevermore, instead of swooping down on them, basically passes them and then it lands on one of the ruin, one of the broken pillars of the ruins that they are heading to, almost like that of a guard of a final boss that they're trying to get out of a dungeon. With then, with a piercing, ru piercing cry, it soon cries as loud as it can. Within cover, as all of them couldn't help but cover their ears, within the Deathstalker alongside that of the Beowulfs couldn't help but also stop as well. With then, soon, John couldn't help but scream out, What's it doing? Why is it just screaming? With then, the girl known as Pyrrha saying, It's calling! With then, soon, no, why saying, what the heck is it even calling? With then, without, as soon as it finishes, stop screaming. Everybody began to hear that of footsteps, or rather, large amount of footsteps that basically shake the entire ground itself. With then, lying out in that of the woods, are basically a horde of Beowulfs and Ursa. However, behind them is that of giant Beowulf's Alpha and giant Ursa Majors as the Beowulf Alphas are basically the same height as the Deathstalkers and the Ursa Majors is basically as big as the Nevermore with then everybody is utterly shocked, surprised, and literally somewhat terrified on what they are seeing. Basically a horde of Grimm heading towards them with then Ruby, almost feeling somewhat down and slumped on her lug, saying, I face against Grimm almost ever since I was at least that of 10 years old. But this, this takes the cake. Within Yang, her half-sister couldn't help but speak up, saying, Yeah, I feel the exact same way, sis. I don't, I don't have the, I don't think I have the strength and basically motivation to fight all that. Within Nora saying, all right, now this is a party, but I don't think I could fight all of them by myself, though. Even though it would be fun, to be fair. With then soon, Ren stepping in front of Nora, as he could, as looking behind, looking at her, he could see that her hands are shaking her hammer magpile. As Ren knows his childhood friend and knows on when she's basically f uh, scared right now, with then. He couldn't help but glare, looking at the gr looking at the grim basically rushing towards them. With however, even with the fear engulfing them, all of them stand their ground as they need to get out of here and need to pass this entrance exam if they want to get into Beacon Academy. With then, however, little did they know they are all being watched. With being watched by that of a man with that of a black and green suit as he has that of a cane in his hands and also looking at the screen and right beside him being that of a mature and blonde woman as she has that of a of a well white blouse long a what a black skirt that goes down to her thighs with uh, uh, she has that of heeled boots. In glasses, as she's basically somewhat worried, saying, Defer Head "Headmaster Ozpin, you can't allow those eight to basically fight against that entire horde of Grimm. 
I can understand basically not allowing the teachers and the teachers and other huntsmen to basically step in. But are you really going to allow them to get killed during this exam? Even this is basically unnatural for an exam like this. With then the white haired man with, gla with the glasses looking at the screen at the horde of Grimm heading this way saying, there's no way that that's possible. Even a Nevermore with that much of authority wouldn't be able to call that, mu that many Grimm unless the man known as Ospin couldn't help but grit his cane even tighter, saying, Glinda, call all the other faculty members to, the, to that of the Emerald Forest. We need to eradicate all, that gr all the Grimm, even the, and, uh, and most importantly, the Nevermore even as well. As for the students, make sure to get them out of there as well. They've already got the relics. They've already passed. Hearing this, Gl the woman known as Glinda couldn't help but smirk with saying, of course, headmaster, with the, as she was about to walk away to gather all the other huntsmen and huntresses of Beacon Academy. She so soon on their scroll screens, they began to notice that something has basically flown through that of the wood, through that of the Emerald Woods almost at that of blinding speeds with then soon Ospen actually widens his eyes saying what is what is that as heading to the horde of Grimm as it being Takashi and his Red Reaper Gundam with soon moving as fast as he can as the hum of his thrusters being looking like that of rose petals continue to head, head forward with then soon on his screens he begins to notice multiple targets ahead some small well some big within saying huh i'm guessing those are the targets then i'll be able to take this care in that of and that of in that of three minutes at tops and i'll be able to get out of this See, seeing on how realistic some of the scenery is just like that in gumpla battles it only makes sense that they wanted to make the make the world of Remnant look even more real than what Rooster Teeth even tried with the CGI. Gotta give Monty credit. He did try, He did do what he could with a budget as, as Rooster Teeth did with Volume 1. They improved in Volume 2 and 3, but still, not that... It still wasn't that much of an improvement. But now, I think Monty would basically love seeing this nowadays. Too bad the man died years ago. But that aside... I got some grim to kill. What do you say, Red Reaper? With then, without, as the gun, as the gunpla didn't say anything. However, its orange eyes begin, begin to shine. With then, soon seeing the grim in the distance, as saying, "Whoa, those grim are huge, especially the Beowulfs. It's like the size of a Deathstalker." And God damn, those Ursa Majors are got a freaking huge they're basically the size of my gumpla with then but then soon having that of a feral grin saying <laughs> oh but whatever this should be a lot more fun than expected with then soon did soon appearing behind in front of him and and that of digitizing being that of the red reaper gundam's main ra main range weapon being the sniper rifle as it has that of a shield on the right side on the right side of it I'll giving a chance to defend giving the gunpla a chance to defend themselves if ha if need be with then soon at s targeting and aiming he soon strikes down destroying basically tons of ba beowulfs with one solitary slash with then soon seeing However, it's not the only one seeing this. As then, the as then the main cast of Ruby saw this too, as they see the massive red Gundam. With then, everybody's utterly shocked and surprised at what they're seeing. With then, soon John saying, "Am I, am I seeing what I'm seeing here? Is that a giant robot?" With then, soon Pierce saying, "Yes, John, that is a giant robot." Is it Elysian? With then soon everybody look at this look at the heiress to the Snee fortune 
within saying, what are you looking at me for? I've never seen anything like that. And not only that, it's not like I know anything about the Snee family basically helping with Elysian, Elysian weaponry. But even so, I've never seen anything that the, that the, well, Atlas military was even able to create. That looks way too advanced, even for us. But we could probably make it at least two, five or five or ten years from now, though. With then, like saying, even when you're basically not even sure of something, you're still, you're still quite well, bragging about yourself. Weiss, within Weiss saying, hey, saying it's a compliment, somewhat. With after that, Ruby on the other hand is looking at. The Red Reaper, as she has that of stars in her eyes. She's not been a big fan of robots. However, looking at it, she sees and looking at the sniper rifle, the Red Reaper's sniper rifle, she's basically and utterly, well, Trent, basically trance, looking at the massive weapon that basically destroyed an entire, an entire bunt, dozens of Grimm with them soon. But, with Takashi, he still continues to basically destroy tons and tons of Grimm. Even one shot destroys that of the out that of the Grim uh, that of the Beowulf Alphas, the size of the Death Stalker as well. With then soon, the ne as for the Ursa Majors, they soon see this as then they shoot that of spot that of white spikes from their backs towards the Red Reaper. With then Takashi dodging each and every one of the spikes. With, however, even if they did hit, thanks to his beam cloak, it's basically cup. It's basically defending him from each and every one of the attacks. With as for some reason, it seems like the Grimm's attacks are similar to that of beam weapons. With then Takashi thinking, huh, probably this is just probably the well VR systems interpretation on how that of the how that of the attacks of this world would affect my gun my gunpla and Gundam. And seeing that I'm barely taking any damage, this is going to be even more fun than I expected. With then soon going down, as without warning, he basically pulls out that of a beam saber, that of a beam saber from the side of his, from from the right side of of the leg of his Gundam, as the as the green beam slices right through that of the Ursa Major. With then soon sl shooting down even more of the Ur of the Beowulfs and Ursa as well. With then soon another Ursa major tries to rush towards that of the Red Reaper and sl and tries to swipe at it. However, within tossing up that of the tossing his sniper rifle into the air, within soon slicing off the cl the claw arm before then. Stabbing it into the stabbing the beam saber in, in the head of the Ursa, with then soon pulling the blade out, placing it back down onto his back into uh, back into the guard into the guard holster, with then soon and materializing in front of him, as it being that of his beam scythe, with then spinning it around. Basically killing all of the of the little Grim and and Merc and Ursa as well, with one solitary slash. With as for the giant ones, they soon rush towards him, trying to jump onto the jump onto the Gumpla, dog piling it while slashing, biting, and basically stabbing into it with their claws and fangs. However, not even trying, Takashi couldn't help but smirk. Before then. The glow, the beam, the green beam scythe couldn't help but have but admit that of a powerful glow. With then Takashi soon screams out, "Special move, Death Circle!" With then soon spinning around, as the beam energy coming off the scythe begins to turn into that of a massive beam circle, defending it while also killing all of the Grim, basically trying to attack the Red Reaper. With then soon, Ruby basically went from a girl who had that of stars in her eyes to a girl with literal hearts in her eyes as well. As then Yang seeing her little sister saying, uh, Rubes? 
you okay? With then Ruby, but without thinking, basically saying, Yang, tell me, what's it like? With then Yang basically raising an eyebrow at her little sister saying, what's it like? What's it like to fall in love at first sight? With then soon, Yang couldn't help but be other shocked and surprised. Is saying, wait, wait, did you just say what I think you just said? With then she's saying, uh, yeah? Uh, what did I say? With then saying, what you just said on what's it like to fall in love at first sight, which I have no idea because I've only had crushes and flings and one night stand and one night stands, of course. But other than that, I've never fallen in love. How are you with then? Ruby saying, because I think I just fallen in love with him. And I have, no, and I think I just know that I don't know who's plotting it, I think, or how they're doing it. But they're basically, I think I've just fall, found my first crush with then Sue. Why saying, oh boy, I knew she was a weapon nut, but to fall in love with the pilot, basically pilot, I think, you don't even know who they are. You, they could be just a completely total jerk or a creep saying, they could be whatever they are. As long as they pilot that thing the way that they are, they're basically my soulmate. With then everybody continue looking at the red, the red cape hooded girl. With then soon John saying, whoever they are, they're basically making an entire work of the gr of the grim over there. Honestly, I was scared out of my mind until now. I'm not. I don't even know what to say anymore. With then soon Pierce saying, I think that I think the word saying is they're getting wrecked, is it? I'm sorry, I'm still not that good at basically modern slang. With then soon Nora saying, That's the word, Pira. With Ren saying, Nora saying, What? You know it is, Ren. With soon Blake continue looking at the gun, looking at the Red Reaper and saying, I think we should be more worried that I think is basically destroying them so easily while we're just standing here watching this when we should be getting up there and away from all of this action with the suit by saying, I agree with I agree with Blake on that one. Let's get out of here, everyone with soon everybody nodding and soon running to the ruins where the Nevermore is. As for Ruby, she's still basically staring at the Red Reaper within soon. Yang grabbing her sister by her hood, saying, Come on, you little you little weapon nut. Saying, Wait, Yang, no, I want to continue watching. With soon destroying the what the last giant Ursa Major. With soon within soon seeing that of a Death Stalker running towards him. Within saying, Huh? A Death Stalker? I thought for sure that Team Ruby would take care of that thing. Or I remember if it's Team Juniper, actually. Ah, eh, whatever. It's just part of the simulation, after all. Soon dematerializing his beam scythe, he soon brings back his beam sniper with soon shooting tons of rounds into that of the Death Stalker, rush basically crawling to him, with then soon realizing, huh? My beams, they're barely doing any damage. Oh, right. The bone armor of the... Of Grim, I'm guessing that they still do. They still act as a somewhat of defense. Eh, depends on how strong the hide of bones are. With then the Death Stalker, seeing the perfect opportunity to strike, tries to stab its stinger into the chest of the of the de of the Red Reaper. However, soon without with as it was inches away from that of the of the skull head of the skull head of the of the Red Reaper. Soon, it stops midway, within trying to pull back its its stinger. Within, the Red Reaper has has caught the stinger before it could even reach it, as it continues trying to pull back, with it saying, you were planning to sting me, weren't you? With then, soon, the Death Stalker tries to pinch at the legs of the Red Reaper. However, every when he tries to pinch down on it, no, no matter how much pressure he puts into it, nothing happens before it then shatters. The claws of the Death Stalker soon break, with then saying, Huh, 
Didn't think my gun club was that strong. Or you deaths or the death stalkers are just that damn weak. <laughs> to be expected after all. With then soon, with irony warning, he be at point blank range, he basically shoots multiple beam shots into that of the skull of the death stalker, with each and every shot cracking into the skull more and more and more before then. It's laid slump on the ground. The Death Stalker is now dead. With and then soon begins to fade like the grim it is. Before then soon, on his display screen, he soon sees that he has one more target left, as it being the giant Nevermore. With then soon, he realized, holy shit, that Nevermore is bigger than it was in the anime. I remember that it was. It was so big that both Ruby and Weiss were able to ride on it. But now, I think almost all, I think both Team Ruby and Team Juniper could ride on that thing. And wait, with then soon using the red, using the display screen on the left side, so on his left screen, he soon begins to scan it before then seeing that, holy shit, does that thing have not just one, not just two pairs of wings, but four? I didn't think Grim were that powerful. And I didn't think Nevermore could actually grow to actually grow another pair of wings. How the hell is that even possible? Ah, whatever. This is just pro it's a simulation, a simulation. Probably did it just to make give me more of a challenge after all. I'm still a world-class gunpla battler after all. And to be fair, even though people forgot forget that I am, I'm still one of the best of the best of the world. At least for today, I can actually go back to being who I once was. The Takashi Yuki I once used to be. With then at full speed thrusting forward as the thrusters create that, create that of the rose petal, same rose petals as before, going at full speed towards that of the Nevermore. With then the Nevermore noticing Team Ruby and Team Juniper before them being formed as a team yet. With then soon everybody trying their best to get the Nevermore's attention as the Nevermore leaves its, well, perch that as on one of the pillars as before, it soon flies up into the air, basically going to slam down onto the onto that of the huntsman plan soon to be in training as everybody dodges with then destroying some of the destroying the bridge that they were on with then both Yang, Blake, and also that of also that of Nora began to fly up from that from the platform that they were once on. With with then soon, Nora getting on that of the going on the bridge back with that of John, Pira, and Ren. With then soon, Ruby jumping up into the air, is then switching her crescent rose into its sniper form. With then suit shoot, shooting that of multiple shots towards the grim, towards that of the flying grim, with then the grim noticing Ruby as it was about to chomp down on her, soon using her semblance, she soon bursts into that of a pile of roses to dodge out of the way, with then landing on one of the pillars, with then soon sent. Yang began to send that of multiple blast of shotgun shells towards the towards the Nevermore as well. However, the Nevermore barely even feels it, but still is annoyed at the fact of yet at Yang's interference. With then was about to rush towards her. However, in a split second, both both grenade shots and also a sniper and a sniper shot was soon hit that of the Nevermore right into right into its head as both Nora and Pira be began to that doing that a suppression fire to help out that of Team Ruby as well. As the Nevermore begins getting even more and more annoyed, it soon begins to rush towards that of t that of the Team Juniper on that of the bridge, with then soon John saying, Up oh boy with without even warning, the black it, it was soon shot into that of the head, being sent flying back into that of the can back into that of the cliffside of the go of the gorge, with everybody shocked and surprised. With then soon, 
Everybody, everybody sees that of the Red Reaper. As for Ruby, though, she had one giant ass smile on her face with with that of red cheek blushes, seeing the massive arsenal that is the Red Reaper after all, with then soon flying up into the air. The Nevermore soon catches its bearings. However, this time the Nevermore having that of a true pissed off, angry look in its eyes. As then on its back, it soon emerges that of its second pair of wings. Four wings soon rise in that of true glory with having that of another piercing scream. With then soon, Everybody is shocked and surprised within Ruby and Weiss utterly shocked and surprised as well. Especially Ruby saying, okay, maybe you were right, Weiss. Maybe it was stupid to basically fly on that thing. With then Weiss on a nearby pillar that's close enough to hear what Ruby said saying, oh, you think? With then soon the Nevermore seeing that of the Red Reaper as it's more angry at that that it was able to knock it back easily than the others as it soon rushes towards the red mobile suit with then soon sending more and more of blasts towards that of the red reaper with then soon Takashi can help but smirk saying gotcha with instead of pulling out that of a beam saber on its side it's soon on it on that of its ankle it opening up soon launching forward towards its left hand, towards that of the Reaper's left hand. He soon stabs it into the into that of the Nevermore's eye, with then the Nevermore squealing that in pain, with then soon grabbing the Nevermore by its, by its head and then dragging it back toward away from the others, with then soon spinning around and that's of an aileron spin with then soon ta flinging it down to the ground with then everybody is utterly shocked and surprised seeing it as a huge dust cloud is appears with them however it however it isn't just that of team ruby now seeing all of this now as it being that of glinda professor dr ublick professor port and also a few other professors as well as they are basically utterly dumbfounded and shocked with then soon Glinda couldn't help but be utterly shocked about this too saying with then opening up her scroll saying Professor Ospin with then soon Ospin answering saying yes Glinda did General Ironwood planned on creating that of a mecha suit for the Elysian military and if so, why is it here with then soon Ozpin basically bas takes a deep breath, breathing through his nostrils for the time being with then saying, ah, actually, James did plan on cre creating that of a mech suit. However, it's only in the prototype phase right about now as for and and to tell you the truth, it's far from looking like what you're seeing now with then soon Glinda saying that then Dr. Ublick saying and if that's the case then this must be something designed by completely utterly different I doubt it'd be that of the White Fang not even their in finances and income could basically do something like this then then soon Port speaking up saying then who who could create such a such a devastating weapon with then Glinda also basically narrowing her eyes saying, that's what I want to know too. With then the Nevermore basically getting back up as its right, as its right eye is completely and utterly bleeding with not as it can, as it can only see out of its left eye. However, it's still seeing red with then saying, oh, you still got your fight in you. Well then, why don't we end this right here and now? Within going through his control scheme with soon seeing on the left side, out on the right side of his screen, as it says, that's of burst mode. With then saying, red burst, go! With then soon, 
as the Red Reaper begins to change within soon, the shoulder pads on its bean cloak, bean cloak begins to open up with soon showing that of ex an extra pair of thrusters. And then soon the slot, the head, that of the circular hood head that was on that of the Red Reaper also begins to open up within soon fin within two like gold two like golden fins begin to pop out as it truly does look like a Gundam now just like what you would see for a unicorn Gundam as it has the head of the Gundam frame Gremory with then soon opening up that of the chest of the skull chest plate within the eyes the eyes inside of the skull begin to react with soon as the jaw opens up it soon open as then it begins to channel beam energy in the center with then soon the nevermore on the other hand begins to release that of a piercing scream as it goes faster than not than even those of the trained huntsmen could actually see with then however as for takashi on the other hand it almost looks like it's basically going in that of normal speed with then saying not fully charged so why don't i just basically amp it up a little bit more if you're going to come right at me with then soon going through through the list again as then put, bringing out that of the gundam the gundam helios is main, basically satellite beam cannons on its back as soon the fin the wing fins begin to open up as then burst of a burst of energy of thrusters that look like that of rose petals begin to burst out with then soon the can the satellite cannons begin to emerge from the ba from the back and soon were ch were charged up alongside of the main set of the main skull cannon on the chest with then soon takashi screams out fire with then a, a blast of pure golden energy soon erupts blasting right towards the nevermore as it soon enters right through to the ground as well creating out of a massive dust cloud and shock wave as for the nevermore it continues to scream out in pain and agony with then it begins to basically turn into nothing with then on the sensors it ba it shows that the target that there are no more targets in the area with then soon takashi couldn't help but be utterly shocked and surprised seeing on what's happened saying oh yeah now that's the good stuff huh it's a lot different fighting against that of gunpla or that of NPC Gumpla, of course. But right now, I feel like my old self again. I feel like I'm the true Takashi Yuki once more. And feel and you may be one of my newest Gumpla I designed, Red Reaper. But I have to say, it feels good to be back in a cut in a Gundam cockpit after all these years. With without even realizing it. It almost feels like that of the Red Reaper was reacting to its pilot with then soon landing down the ground seeing on what he was able to do saying damn talk about interaction normally in a normal in a normal battle that wouldn't react so easily i mean you would see that in basically the world to world C gunpla tournaments given that certain certain attacks can basically interact with the with the area around you but still even this basically takes the cake. Well, I think I should be done. I mean, and that, even though it didn't take, it didn't, I didn't complete in that at th three minutes, four minutes tops is good enough for me. I should probably head back now as well. As for the simulation, I didn't feel anything wrong or no, well, jolts in energy anywhere. So I should be able to leave now. At any rate, I should close out of the system. As soon as he basically shuts down the system towards his cockpit, or I should say the Gumpla battle pod, or or the replica that it takes on, he soon brings out his GP base and was about to leave with then soon Glinda and the other teachers 
with then Professor Xi'an Zigen soon speaks up, as they couldn't help but say, it seems the pilot of that machine is starting to come out. Let's see who they truly are. With then all the other teachers begin to be on guard. With then soon, Takashi comes out, as then he soon sees the sees the open green field, and then soon sees the giant hole that the Nevermore was in. With then soon blinking his eyes, before then soon looking around saying, "What the hell? No, no, wait, wait." Am I dreaming? Am I still uh, daydreaming about what's happened? Ah, oh, God, don't tell me that I basically went through some, I basically blacked out during the whole exam. Ugh, hang on, let me close my eyes, think things through, calm my mind. Hallucinations like this do take time before you wake up with then closing his eyes deeply, taking a few moments before opening them again, saying, and I'm still here. Okay, what the hell is going on here? As the, as the white-haired young man couldn't help but think, there's no way in hell this is real. With then soon putting his GP base in his pocket, as then looking down, saying, oh God, that's pretty high. Jesus Christ, I didn't think, uh, what, why, is that, why is it so high? With then soon the young Port couldn't help but seek up saying, Oh, seems like he doesn't know about this. Or he's basically playing the fool by any chance to get us off guard. With then soon Dr. Ublick speaking up saying, Um, doubtful. By his term, it seems like he doesn't, he doesn't even know where he's even at. Possibly a side effect of potting that machine. S something like that could cause some, could cause that of traumatic brain, brain damage and possibly hallucinations. With then soon, Xion saying, No, this boy, I don't think he's from, he's from around here, or rather, not from here at all. With then soon, Glenda looks at the prof looks at the white hair professor, saying, What do you mean by that, professor? With then, he they couldn't help but say, it's just a hunch, but looking at them and seeing how confused they are, even though the way that they were piloting, facing against the grim, it seems like they have done it for years. In a way, it almost seems like they believe that they're not supposed to be here, or rather, that the situation he's in is not supposed to happen at all. By his, by his actions and body language, it seems. With then, soon, Glinda couldn't help but take the words of their of the professor with then thinking all do all all the same we had to make sure to go over there all, with then looking at bo both Port and Ublick saying Ublick Port go and check on the other the other applicant student applicants make sure that they get back to the get back to the school safely with then soon but both the pudgy and slim man couldn't all basically nod. Well, then soon, she, Glinda saying, Xion, please follow me. Saying, as you wish, Professor G Goodwitch. With then, both of them head down. With then soon, with Takashi saying, there's no way, there's no way, there's no way in hell. I should be, I should be black, I have to be blacking out. There's... No, wait, I had to be passed out. Possibly some kind of shortage happened like in the middle of battle and it started to affect my mind and I'm probably seeing things. That's the most logical explanation for all of this. There's no way in hell that I'm in the world of remnants. No way in hell I'm basically in the world where a psychotic witch, a psychotic magical witch with that basically the power to control Grimm and and also in a world where crazy ass monsters can base is attracted to negative emotion in a world where where its lore is basically crazy as hell and makes no goddamn sense with then soon seeing that of two figures basically walk over to that of takashi as then takashi narrowing his eyes 
within soon saying, and that's Glinda Goodwitch and she on and also she on Zagan. Huh. Okay. I'm either lost my mind, which seems more logical and more likely, or I'm basically in the world of Ruby, where I am most likely am going to be basically the biggest suspicious motherfucker in the world. And given on how much trust is basically non-existent in this damn, in this damn world, I'm basically dead. Yeah, that's it. My life has basically turned into a never-ending nightmare, hasn't it? With then, Sue, basically, as then, Takashi basically just slumps over with his, scar with his scarf basically leaning over him as he just sits on the edge of the, well, cup on the cockpit with then, basically, as then both Glinda and Xion finally arrived with then, soon. Glinda clearing her throat, saying, You, young man, would you please come down from there? We have questions for you. With then Takashi not even listening as he's basically completely out of it. He's not passed out. He's just numb to the fact that he's stuck, in, that he's most likely stuck in the world of Remnant. Or rather, He's been fucking isekai to the world of Remnant without even knowing how the hell that's even possible. With then Glenda saying, Excuse me, I'm telling you to please come down here. We have questions for... With then soon, Shion walking over to Glenda saying, Please allow me. I, I must... I want to speak to him as well. Or rather, I believe you should look at his eyes. With then... Soon Glinda looking at, z looking at Takashi closely. Within soon she's saying, oh, oh dear. With then Xion saying, he's most likely in his own little world. Possibly going that of a, well, mental withdrawn. Or possibly feeling like he's basically blacked out entirely. He's not unconscious, just not aware of that we're here. I think it's best that we should probably wait until he comes to his senses. With then, with then soon, she, she on sits down on the ground. With then soon, Glinda couldn't help but sigh as she crosses her arms, waiting for Takashi to come back to his senses. A couple, a couple hours later, soon, all the teams have now been formed. As Team Cardin, Team Juniper, and Team Ruby has now been officially formed to get, has now been officially formed with then soon. The newly formed Team Ruby leaves to head to their dorm rooms with then soon. Ru Ruby saying, this was awesome. I can't believe it. It's amazing. I'm actually here in Beacon. And not only that, I even saw the craziest thing in the world. This is the greatest day of my life! With then soon Yang saying, Cool your jets there, sis. Even I I won't lie, what we saw out there was so cool. As that giant robot that basically just looked like it was handling Grim like it was nothing. You know, whoever was piloting it must have been one hell of a trained huntsman to do so. With then soon Blake saying, Indeed, I have to say, it is quite Surprising, with then looking at Weiss, who's also, who's been quiet this entire time, with then Blake saying, Weiss, you sure you don't know anything about that, that giant robot? With then, soon, Weiss still not saying anything, with then, soon, Yang speaking of saying, uh, Weiss, Ice, Ice Queen, with then, soon, Weiss snapping out of it saying, who are you calling Ice Queen? With then, Soon finally come to her senses with then soon wife's can up and say, ah, right, right. <sighs> uh, again, what did you guys ask about? With then soon Yang saying, oh, uh, you were asking what you think about that giant robot. If, if you really do think that it's, well, from Atlas with then saying, huh? Oh, right. That uh, personally, I just have a hard time believing that it is. I mean, sure, 
Like I said, we could definitely make something like that, but it's way too advanced, way too powerful. Not only that, it's, it's what, whatever it was shooting, it wasn't dust at that. With then soon Ruby basically getting out of her love craze fangirl mode over the Red Reaper. With then saying, huh? oh, right, right. I've been dealing with dust my my life when it comes to using ammo. So whatever it was using, it definitely was not dust. Or whatever that beam what that that beam was, it almost looked like that of a laser beam. With then soon Yang saying from science fiction? Definitely. But hey, at least it was do at least it was helping us out. I don't even know what we would do if we face against them. I'd probably go down in a blaze of glory. With then soon, Blake saying, "Yeah, not interested in dying so soon, Yang." But I do appreciate whoever did help us. But to be honest, I'm more wondering where are they at at this very moment. With then soon, Ruby saying, "I really hope we can meet them in person. It's going to be so cool." With after saying that, soon. In that of the tallest tower in that of Beacon Academy, currently the 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 main office of the headmaster of Beacon, Oz, Professor Ozpin, with in him behind his desk as he's drinking his cop his nightly coffee, within Takashi also drinking the coffee too, as feeling like he needs it for his nerves right about now, as he's based within soon. Right beside him being that of Glinda and also that also that of Shion and and also in that use using that of hidden cameras to to view the conversation is that of the headmaster in general of of Atlas, James Ironwood. Also from another screen, as it being from the headmaster of Shade Academy, being being that of Headmaster the Theodore, and another one. Unfortunately, it wouldn't be from that of the Headmaster of Haven Academy, being Leonardo, but instead, it's one of the most important, another important member of the Inner Circle, being Crow Broadwin, as he's seeing the conversation through his scroll, while also drinking a little bit, drinking a little bit on the side as well. With then Ozpin basically looking at the young man as it almost seems like he's been through a lot just by looking at his eyes. With then soon he couldn't help but clear his throat saying, you're, you say your name is Takashi Yuki? Saying, yes, Professor Ozpin. Saying, and you're already aware who I am, even though I haven't told you who... Well, how can I not know about the most important person in the entire world, after all? With then hearing this, both Glinda and Shion couldn't help but look at each other before looking at Ozpin. With then Ozpin drinking his coffee once again, saying, "You put a lot of put a lot of well faith in me, after all." With then Takashi couldn't help but smirk, saying, "How can I not? After all, you're the one." You and everyone else here are the defenders of the world. Not just against the Grim, not just against the White Fang or a lot of criminals out there, but also against the Wicked Witch, of course. The Wicked Witch who can control all Grim, right? With then, after saying that, everybody was actually dumbfounded with, with Ozpin narrowing his eyes a little bit, but not in that of threatening. Say, Glinda couldn't help but be wondering how much he knows. Shion, a lot more curious about his information. As for James, completely narrowing his eyes and that of suspicion. Theo, basically gr grasping his beard, th thinking on, wondering on what he's going on, how this young man knows so much. And Crow, waiting in, waiting and seeing on how much the kid knows and seeing if he works with Salem. With then saying, don't worry, I don't work for Salem. Like hell, I will work for work for your ex-wife. 
with then soon to Ozpin basically spits his coffee, actually coughing a little bit with Thin Soon. Glinda saying, what? Why would you with Thin Soon? Xion couldn't help but laugh at, at what Takashi said with Thin Soon. Takashi saying, just kidding, just kidding. It's just a joke. But I do know you have a strong connection towards Salem, Ozpin. Not only... She's the reason behind so much of your life, both the good and the bad, and mainly the main threat to humanity, at least one of the main threats to humanity in this world. With then soon finally getting catching his breath with then saying, you know so much. Tell us who, who you truly are, Takashi Yuki, and that machine that you will use to defend many of the applicant students here at Beacon as well, and defeating that horde of Grimm is too. How, what is it? And was it made by the Elysian military by any chance, or by another organization, or possibly by Salem with then soon? Takshi saying, like hell, Salem would di wouldn't have the opportunity to make something like that, even if she was able to steal it with the, using that of Watts's technology, of course, but I digress. As for the machine, it's called a gun. It's called a Gumpla, or rather, what is true name, a Gundam, and I created it with my own two hands. As for who I truly am, I'm telling you this now. I am not from the world of Remnant. In fact, I am from a world far from the world of Remnant. In my world, you are all basically people whose stories I have followed and I have seen throughout my entire life. Basically, you're nothing but characters on a screen for me. And to me, I have the answers that you all been looking for if you want to turn this war around. For the meantime, all I want it's a place where I can belong for the time being. So, let's get down to business, shall we? And that's it. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. Please tell me what you guys think in the comments below. Let's read them. So, as you guys take this chap, take the first chapter that finally shows Takashi in the world of Remnant. And also me displaying that of the Red Reaper. I wanted to basically do a chapter like this at first in the first chapter, but I didn't want, but honestly, I wasn't really feeling it. So I basically cut it in half and mixed it and basically mixed the first half being that of at the end of chapter one with that being that of Team Ruby and Team Juniper about to leave to head back with their relics, but instead... And instead being caught up by a horde of Grimm, and then soon the Red Reaper Gundam shows up with, in, with that of Takashi. But instead, I added it to this chapter instead, to, to be honest. I wanted to make it a lot longer. To be honest, I wanted to do something a little bit more interesting. As for Takashi's role in this story, though, he's, he's, the, main he's the main protagonist of the story. But Ruby, but Ruby, Yang, Weiss, and Blake are still all the main are the true main focus of this story, to be honest. It's just that Takashi will only will only take part, will only get himself involved to basically prevent certain things from happening. Also, and could also open some doors up for many of the main characters, especially the inner circle, and also possibly change the tide of the war and prevent a lot of other things that could have been prevented in Ruby. So yeah. At any rate, if you guys like this, Please like, comment, and subscribe. Hit that bell notification to keep updating my videos when I upload on the channel. Also, check out my Discord gaming channel, main channel, Cash App, and also Patreon as well. All link in the description below. So with all that said, this is Leon Mookie signing out. Later, guys, and I hope you all take care.